Hi, Janet. We are here in your beautiful garden, and what I'd like to know is what do you think is the future of gardening? Well, um, I think that gardening will always have a future, but if you look at this little side garden, this is actually a good example of what has happened in the last 30 years, because in 1988, I did a feature on this garden for Fine Gardening Magazine, which is a magazine in the States, and um, you know, it, it represented what I wanted to do with this house, which we just moved into. It represented what I wanted to do with my career, which is freelance garden writing and photography. And it was 30 years ago. And in that time, um, we've seen, I think, a big um, sort of downward, uh, not spiral, but certainly a downward momentum in everything to do with print magazines for one thing, newspapers for another. I was the gardening columnist for The Sun for six years, National Post for a couple of years, um, and have a, a long-standing freelance photography business, um, have lots of friends in gardening. But we've all seen the um, sort of reduction in specialist nurseries, in print outlets, um, and frankly, in interest in being outdoors and being in nature. So you see um, the noise behind us is another monster home being built with no negative space, you know, no garden. Or if there's a garden, the people will be too busy paying off that house to be outside, um, you know, working in it. So I'm not trying to sound like I'm lamenting the end of, um, you know, an industry or a passion or an art. I think there will always be people who love to do that. But certainly for me, um, I don't see the same interest um, or ability to pay or to have the eyeballs to look at uh, this sort of thing from the next generations. Um, my own daughter is, you know, working a job with two, three kids under, under four and uh, they won't have the time. She and her husband don't have the time to do this. So this was a bit of a demographic quirk. Um, and you, Anne, were talking about a Facebook post I made which attracted a lot of attention from people in Europe and the United States, people in the gardening biz. Um, and some of them, some of the younger people took uh, offense with it a little bit or, or differed from my view, um, but they're the ones who are right in the industry. And when you're inside looking out, it looks rosy. But if you're on the outside looking in and remembering what used to be, then it's not quite as nice as it used to be. Your grandmother and you have children, grown adult children and little grandchildren, if you could tell a young person who is looking bleakly at their job prospects and looking bleakly at their future and you could give them a tip on how, what kind of enjoyment this has given you, why should they invest in this kind of hobby? It's much more than a hobby for you, it's, it's a passion, it's a pursuit, it's a vocation. But for someone young, if, if there's something you could say to somebody why they should invest in gardening, why they should invest in plants, in color. Because you have to stay close to nature. We have to stay connected to this planet we're spinning around with. And um, if you don't, uh, you, uh, you lose a vital connection to, to your life, to Earth, to the life of Earth. So I would say do that. I would say if you want to consider getting into freelance garden writing and photography, don't quit your day job, marry a wealthy <laughs> spouse, or um, be prepared to wait tables, you know, on the side. But I do this now for love, for money. I have a blog, thepaintboxgarden.com, and I do it for love, not for money.